planet's on fucking fire. What's up, everybody? I'm Nikki. This is Backyard Politics, and my microphone just fell over. How's it going, everybody? Um, as we all know, Kyle Rittenhouse was found not guilty on all charges. Two counts of uh, first degree recklessly endangering safety, um, first degree reckless homicide, first degree recklessly, oh, sorry, first degree intentional homicide, and attempted first degree intentional homicide. Couple things here. How is he not found guilty on recklessly endangering safety? I mean, he literally killed people. He endangered everyone there. He traveled there probably with the intent to use his AR. So, yeah. Reckless endangering. The thing that I don't like, especially... I mean, I don't like this whole thing, obviously, but especially is the wording of this shit. Intentional homicide. Why are they prosecuting him for intentional homicide? And if you don't think that you can prosecute someone for homicide, prosecute them for manslaughter. Like, there's a million fucking things that they could have tried to charge him with or tried or did charge him with. Sorry, I'm fumbling my words. But they chose intentional homicide and how was he not found guilty on reckless homicide so it was not reckless but it wasn't intentional what was it then like fucking kidding me what the fuck was it then what would you call that because that was a murder that was a homicide that was two homicides actually what the fuck? So this brings me to uh, this tweet, which actually I thought of this a couple days ago. Um, remember when an anti-fascist, Michael Rynell, killed a neo-Nazi, Aaron Danielson, in Portland, and Trump subsequently sent the U.S. Marshals to hunt down and revenge kill him? Because that is true. That actually happened. I covered it here on this channel. He, uh, Darth Vader there, suck his stormtroopers on Rhinel. And then, guess what happened? Shit. Oh, where'd it go? Did I misplace it? Fuck. Oh, here it is. Police shot Portland slaying suspect without warning or trying to arrest him first, witness says. So. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm so fucking irritated. Like, why do I have to tell you all this? Not, not the subscribers. I appreciate you. I love you. You're fucking rad. But why are we still having to yell about this shit like get in the fucking streets and take over there's so many more of us than there are of them are you fucking serious god damn remember Alan Swinney because you should I've covered him multiple times on this channel he's a fucking douchebag and a fascist right wing whatever the hell you want to call him I think he's a patriot as he likes to call himself um Multnomah County District Attorney Mike Schmidt which is in Oregon Portland um, announced that a 12-person jury found Alan Swinney, 51, guilty of one count of assault in the second degree, two counts of unlawful use of mace in the second degree, two counts of unlawful use of a weapon, paintball gun, you heard me, paintball gun, menacing, attempted assault in the fourth degree, attempted assault in the second degree, pointing a firearm at another. Pointing a firearm at another. Like in that photo. That's what they're talking about. Assault in the fourth degree and unlawful use of a weapon with firearm, all of which occurred during the summer of 2020. 
Sweeney became a known entity in Portland during last year's protests, calling himself a patriot and appearing at multiple demonstrations in the Northwest wherein he instigated and committed violent acts under the banner of free speech and pro-police sentiments. Free speech, pro-police don't go together. The cops are literally stomping on our First Amendment fucking rights. So you can't be for both. You're fucking confused or stupid. Probably both. Um, This idiot also dated Megan Stevens for a while till he got locked up. Um, Until Swinney got locked up and then she found somebody else conveniently uh, racist as she is. But I bring that up because she also um, very severely assaulted with um, somebody else uh, one of the cameramen downtown. So this is just pattern. The Swinney thing I'm relating to the Rittenhouse case because... This is setting a precedent. This, him getting off free, completely free, not guilty on all charges, when he murdered two people. And I am not standing up for Swinney at all. But look at all the charges that he got, especially the two counts of unlawful use of a paintball gun, consider it a weapon, and pointing a firearm at another. So now, potentially, if anybody gives a fuck or if he gives a fuck, potentially he could use the Rittenhouse case to try to overturn his charges. And it also, Rittenhouse, sets a precedence for future cases. So now it makes it easier for right-wingers to murder Black Lives Matter protesters, free speech protesters, any protesters, anybody. Uh, Minorities, obviously. So this just, this parallels how the plowing through crowds, how that happened, right? And I know this happened in um, Wisconsin as well, very recently, but let's go back to this so I can talk. But the plowing through crowds, when that first happened, America was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. There's always that shock factor. And then we're like, yeah, on to the next thing. Let's see what the Kardashians are doing this week. I believe it was Florida. And I'm especially thinking it was because, oh my God, Florida, what the fuck is wrong with you? Um, I'm pretty sure it was Florida, but if not, it happened in one of the states where it's not necessarily illegal to plow through crowds with your vehicle. If you can uh, figure out which state it is, leave it in the comment section below. I appreciate that. Um, But I believe it was Florida. Yeah. So that also set a precedence for the multiple cars and trucks that and semis there was a semi I believe that was I think that was in Portland um they just go crashing through protests crashing through your first amendment right your first amendment right is to protest freedom of speech which brings me back to this dumbass Swinney he says he's for free speech and pro-police sentiments, which doesn't make any fucking sense. Like I said, the cops are the stormtroopers to Darth Vader, which also means that the cabinet of Trump and Trump, same thing. They're all there to serve the master. It also means Biden, author of the crime bill, which I'll keep fucking repeating, author of the crime bill, our president, the vice president, the ex-vice president, the former fucking vice president of a black president. That's how America works. Authored the crime bill. Yeah. 
that means he, Biden, is obviously a fascist. That's how our government works. They don't care about the fucking people. Biden and his cabinet are no better than Trump and his cabinet. It's just that Biden doesn't say fucked up racist shit on camera as often. And now he can claim insanity. And don't think for a fucking second that Kamala Harris is for minorities. Go back and watch my previous videos of that. She fucked them over hard. So hard. Her dad's family doesn't even want to claim her anymore. She fucked him over so hard. That's a fact. I've read that online in an article and I've covered it. Fact. So anyway, our government is fascism. Our fucking country is founded on fascism. So much so that Ted Nugent wants to give Kyle Rittenhouse free ammo for the rest of his life. Why would he need free ammo? If it wasn't an intentional homicide, if it wasn't intentional, then why the fuck would he need so much ammunition? I mean, I don't think you go hunting with an AR-15. Actually, I'm being sarcastic. I know you fucking don't. I've shot one. Come on, man. You don't hunt with it. The fuck are you doing? What do you need it for? What do you need it for? Now you're probably going to need it for fucking protection. Either that or you're going to have to hire fucking Proud Boys as your security. But seriously. This is our country. And then we'll forget about it by tomorrow and... Oh my God, who's Kim Kardashian dating tomorrow? I don't care. I don't care. Nobody cares about us. Why don't we unite as the fucking poor? Let's fucking unite and fight this shit. And if you think that they're trying to divide and conquer us just because there's some of us fighting against fascism at the street level you're fucking kidding yourself because if you leave the ones at the street level they become the ones at the top cut them off cut them all off they're a fucking cancer historian examines Native American genocide its legacy and survivor so happy fucking Thanksgiving everybody this is specifically Oregon, and I found that interesting because that's where we're at here. Um, this is just an article that I'm probably going to cover tomorrow. And uh, it goes over the Beekman Professor of Northwest and Pacific History at the University of Oregon believes that in their description of the conflicts with Native Americans, mainstream political and historical discourses in the United States have often obscured this deadly distinction. And then he says, against Native nations and communities, it was a genocidal war. So this is what our country was founded on. And not much has changed at all. Not much at all. And I would like to leave you with this. Could you pass the pumpkins and maize and we'll pass you the smallpox blankets? So, while you're eating your turkey tomorrow, try to do one kind thing for somebody. One random act of kindness. Not a, oh, here I'll pass the potatoes. Like an actual act of kindness. Preferably for a stranger, but just any ra random act of kindness. Write it down in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe. This channel <laughs> will not grow without your help because YouTube has had its foot on my neck since the beginning because corporations are bullshit. So please share the shit out of this. Subscribe, like, all that crap. I really appreciate you guys. Have an awesome Indigenous People's Day. All right? Remember who it's for and about. It's not about Christopher Columbus and all those Disney stories.
All right. Genocide. Genocide Remembrance Day. Stay safe. Peace.